what is up guys, it is the Citrus Panda here today, and I'm coming at you with episode 73 of our Adventure Quest Let's Play, and we are continuing where we left off, which was nowhere, because we actually weren't doing anything the last time I ended the video. Now, I do want to say that uh, I will pick up a little bit, the pace a little bit on videos, I just didn't make a video, I made the video to bring back this series, and I ended up not even making very many videos. Uh, the coming days from now, I'll start making videos more often, and whatnot. So, uh, why don't we click on the Dragon Knight, because last time I saw this, and it was pretty interesting, but I didn't really know much about it, so I wanted to do it today. Also, I just wanted to fly this by you guys, but if you have any suggestions on what you want me to do, I am ready to go. And you can give me suggestions. So that's pretty much what I want. Uh, if you if you guys want to do that, that's what I want from you. So if you'd like to participate, just go ahead and be like, "Yo, do blank and blank," and that's what you need to do. And I possibly will do it. Most likely, I'll do it because I don't get that many suggestions anyway. And I am loving the insightful guardian guardian robes. I think I bet the uh, the one for the rogue is pretty cool too. But I'm I'm really liking that armor. It's just really cool. Alright, so let's see, um, we're gonna get out my spellcasting gear, I do want to check this really quick, what is this, it allows you to amplify the damage of your spells, since they did patch that, I'm just wondering if they actually patched it so that it's amazing, like it's really good, but I'm not sure, I'm gonna try it out, I'm gonna do some tests right here, so we're going to see right here, now my eyes are glowing blue, which might mean that that's like the special ability the armor has, or I, I'm not really sure. Maybe it does that every single time you use the a spell with that armor on. Now I'm gonna go to my Paladin's Passion, and I'm gonna hit him with the same thing. And it seems like my Guardian Robes do considerably more damage when it does the blue eye thing. Now I don't know if it does the blue eye thing every single time, so I'm gonna check and just to see. Let's go back to these robes. Blue eyes again. Um, I might just call that one a fluke, but maybe not. I don't know. I still don't understand if this one's... I don't know. Seems like I'm hitting more, but I can't really tell specifically because of the fluctuation in the armor and stuff. Um, this one has an offensive lean, which is good because you do more damage and you take more damage. I like offensive lean armors, though. It's actually quite cool. Um, I'll go up. Rule, yeah, dexterity, here we go. I'm, I'm best at int, int, uh, whoa, 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 I'm stuttering like none other. Um, I have, the best stat rolls, wow, I can't even talk today. The best stat rolls for me are intellect, obviously. But, uh, oh boy, did he just hit, okay, never mind. I thought he hit all that on one turn, but he, uh, he didn't actually hit all that. Okay, so. Let's go fire and test this out a little bit more. My eyes are still blue. We're hitting like 90s, 70s, you know, 150s and whatnot. Now, if I remember correctly, this armor did boost your spell. It had a smaller chance of boosting your spell's damage, but it boosted the damage by a considerably, you know, considerably more than the Paladin Passion. This one boosted the damage uh, a little bit, but... It also kind of did it often, so I'm not really sure. But it seems like that armor, the Guardian armor, is quite a bit better than my Paladin armor from what I'm seeing, the hits I'm seeing right now. And this is still elementized to wind, I believe. Yes, maybe? Yes, okay. So it's still elementized to wind, so it's not exactly the best, but it is my wind armor, which is pretty good. And it's got decent resistances to most things. And since this is my offensive armor, um, I don't know. I think that's also why it might be hitting more, because it does have an offensive lean to the armor. Uh, defensive leans are cool too. It, it depends on your build that you're using. I was thinking of even making like a tank sort of build with lots of health. I don't know if I have the time to actually do that in between. But um, if I end up making a video like that, or I, if I end up making a character like that, I might actually add some of the episodes in this Let's Play. Because I remember a while back, I actually did throw in some of my main character. Or I call him a main character. I guess he was the character that I made back in like 2005 when I first started playing this game. 
Um, and that's the character that I'm talking about. I am not even using the right pet right now. Uh, Fairy Godmother G. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Boom, boom. I quite like this armor. I, I just like it. It's attack. I like the way you hold your weapon. I like the way you look. I like the armor in general. It just looks really awesome. And I also always liked the Guardian robes. But there wasn't that much of a point to have them because, well, they just weren't that good it, compared to, like, the Ultra Guardian plate. Uh, there wasn't really that much, you know, of a point to have them. But now, since you can get the Ultra Guardian robe, that's pretty awesome. It's a nice update that they did, and uh, it shows you that they still care about the game. Even though it's extremely old. And I, I like that about a game developer, you know, supporting a game way after release. I think it's a generally, it's a decently popular game, so. Okay, we had the uh, the saving issue again with that, uh, that long, long loading screen. I hope that this quest isn't, you know, super, super long. What the heck is this? A Quadrus. They're even making new monsters. Actually, I don't want to say they're making new monsters because I, I have no idea if they are or not. Honestly, that's, that's one thing about this game that's amazing. Like, there is so much content in this game that you don't even know whether it's new or it's old. Because it's just kind of like, did I ever see that before? Or was it just because, you know, whoa, yeah, it's something new. But, that regard, that's, that's regardless. I don't, regardless of that, this game is still quite a bit of fun. And I'm glad that the developers still like to update the game and whatnot. Now, I can understand from, like, a, a, you know, a perspective of the developer as far as, like, keeping the game going. Because I'm just going to take a stab in the dark. And this might not be correct at all. But I think I'm probably safe in assuming Adventure Quest is Battleon's or Ardex Entertainment's most popular game. The reason I say that is because it's their oldest game. And although it's not online... It's got, like, this system where you can just buy your membership once, and then you're good to go. And I think that appeals to a large audience, especially people who are more casual gamers, because they buy it. It's like buying a one to It's like basically buying a game. Like, when you pay for Adventure Quest, you're basically paying, you know, 15 or $20, depending on whether you get Guardian or X-Guardian. Maybe it's 25 for X-Guardian. I can't even remember. It doesn't matter. But you're basically paying for a game. And that's what you're buying. You're buying the game. And that's pretty much what you're paying the $20 for. And I always liked that about Battleon or Artix Entertainment, whatever you want to call them. Um, how they just, you know, it was a one-time fee. And they didn't they didn't do that with Adventure Quest Worlds. And I kind of understand why, because it was an online game. And when you keep an online game up like that, you generally want a lot of updates on an online multiplayer game. So, I don't know. It just kind of fits the model, I guess. Although I, I, just, I didn't quite understand it, and I was never a fan of Adventure Quest Worlds. Not because of that, not because you had to pay monthly. I just didn't really like the game that much. Because paying monthly for a game, I have no problem doing. As long as, one, the price is reasonable. And the content that you're getting is reasonable. And, you know, the game has constant updates. And, you know, in general, it's just getting a lot of stuff supporting you know, your money, you know, and it's not just saying, oh, yeah, you're giving us money, and that's all, you know, <clears throat> now, I don't know, like, I'll, I think that maybe, like, eight dollars or nine dollars a month is probably what max I'd pay for, I would never go for, like, a World of Warcraft sort of thing, I don't know, I, I've never been a fan of paying that much money, I mean, okay, looking at it realistically, like, is it that much money if you enjoy the game, no, not at all, I mean, the majority of people who play World of Warcraft probably have some sort of income, like a job or something. And I'm just saying that because, I don't know, you know, the majority of the player base is probably above, you know, you know, older teenagers to adults. So they probably, although they might play the game tons, they probably have some sort of income. So when you think about it that way, it, even if you have a minimum wage job, it's like two hours of work in America. It's like seven something per hour minimum wage. I don't even know what it is. But, um, you know, looking at it realistically, it's like two hours work for one month of a game that you're going to be playing uh, quite a bit. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm not going to, you know, judge anybody for paying for a game like World of Warcraft. I pay monthly for Dofus, which is, that is only $7 a month. And to that, uh, I would just say it's kind of cool because I can just, 
you know, pay for it, and I can get, like, two months of membership for what I could get one month in World of Warcraft. Plus, I don't have a job, a job or anything, so I have no steady uh, income. And you might be saying, well, you're, you're a partner with YouTube. Yeah, I would I would like to say, I don't know if I can tell you how much money I make. Um, for the charity thing, I hope to tell you how much money I make, but the um, how much money I made for the charity, I'll probably end up just giving, like, a an estimate to how much we donated to charity during the month of December, but the weird thing is, is that, well, not the weird thing, it might come as a shock to a lot of people, it didn't really come as a shock to me, honestly, um, how much money people actually make off of YouTube, it's not very much, like, a lot of people think, well, you know, these people get, like, 50,000 views a day, and they can live off of it, and that's possible, I wouldn't go so far as to say they could live off of it with, like, 50,000 views a day. They could live off of it, actually, but it wouldn't be the best lifestyle. And I would give you estimates and stuff, but I, I don't even know if I can tell you that, honestly. Um, <laughs> under contract and stuff. I don't really think it matters, because it's just general knowledge. Well, it's not general knowledge, but uh, I don't see why it would matter all that much. So, oh, dang it. This thing might kill me. If this thing kills me, I'm going to be angry because I should have healed. I had my cursor over top of it. I thought I even pressed the button to heal, but apparently I didn't. So keep on healing. Keep on healing. Got to do this. Um, but again, I, it takes a long time to actually make a living off of YouTube. And that's why I don't think that's ever going to be an option for me. It's just going to be a, a hobby. And I started this back two years ago. I've reached the two-year anniversary of my channel. I forgot to make a two-year two-year anniversary video. Um, I'm probably I was probably gonna do like a week uh, a year in review at the end of the year. My channel has been going strong for two years, which is pretty crazy. I never thought I'd make two years into YouTube. Also, I have a hundred thousand views, which is crazy, and I need to make a video on that too. Probably in the same video, two years on YouTube and one hundred thousand views will probably be next video. I, I'm, I was going to work on something special, but I have a couple special things planned for 500 subs, so I was probably just going to hold off on the special, special, special stuff, like the the video ideas I had for, you know, 500 subs, and wait until I have 500 subs. Uh, you know, in a perfect world, I would have reached 500 subs and 100,000 views at the same time, but that didn't happen, so... Yeah, that's, that's not happening, but I'm close to 500 subs, and I was doing some math the other day, just to see how much, um, you know, how much time I need to spend on YouTube until my channel grows decently big, with a pretty big, you know, subscriber base, because I just always check that, I'm like, you know, it's, anybody who does YouTube videos, it's their dream to have a lot of people watching their videos, because at the end of the day, that's what they're making YouTube videos for, to get views, you know, they're not just making YouTube, I mean, I mean, it's fun to make the YouTube videos, but a lot of people give up YouTube because they don't get any views, and people are like, oh, well, if you enjoyed it, then, you, then you know, you would have just kept on going. As much as I love making YouTube videos, um, having no views on videos, not getting a lot of views on videos, it, it kind of sucks. Like, if you start out a channel, like right now, a gaming channel, you're, you're done. I mean, unless you do something, like, crazy, good, you get a shout-out. Or you just get some random chance of luck, you can't succeed very well. Like unless you're really determined and you want to spend years building up your channel, uh, doing dual comms, things like that. Then on that, you know, if you're gonna do that kind of stuff, then you can. But in general, it's uh, it's all about wanting people to view your, view your content. And the more views people get, the more motivated they are to make videos. It's just kind of like a general rule of thumb. If you don't have anybody watching, it feels like it's fun to make the videos, but is there a point to make them? Because the main thing about making a video is that you have fun playing the game that you're playing in the video, if you're a gamer. Uh, or you have fun making the video that you made. And, I mean, maybe you're just making videos and you're making them anyway for whatever reason. And maybe you're just uploading the, them to YouTube just because. That's okay, but I'm talking about, like, maybe 
if you're just playing video games and you're doing it for fun, but you're pretty much playing the video game for fun, if you know what I mean. Like, you're not playing the, you're not making videos because it's so much fun as the game is just fun. So when you get enough views, it's like, yeah, just quit YouTube and, uh, you know, I'll just play the game because it's less work on my part and I just get to play the game. Now, I, honestly, I was, I'm going to give some advice in that video that I'm going to be making. If you're, if you're into making YouTube videos or anything, anything like that. And I'm not the one to be giving advice because I only have like 450 subscribers and the majority of those people don't watch my videos. But the subscriber count usually doesn't matter. It's the content of your videos. Like, if you check a subscriber to view ratio, a lot of your views probably don't even come from your subscribers. And if you're a YouTuber, you should just check that one day. I probably it's somewhere in the uh, analytics, uh, analytics or whatever you call them. Uh, and it's kind of funny because, you know, you think subscribers equals, you know, views, but it doesn't exactly mean that. And I'll talk about that more in the video tomorrow or whenever I get around to making it because I never, ever make a video on a schedule. And that's that's one of the things I love about this YouTube channel. I can just relax and make videos whenever I feel like it. I'm not tied by, down by a schedule. I'm still in school and I don't have a job and I just, you know, make YouTube videos. Uh, in a way, actually, if you were out of school, making YouTube videos would be easier. You'd have more time. You wouldn't have homework, but you might have a job. So, you know, that might be conflicting. But honestly, if I had to guess, I'd say it would be easier to make YouTube videos when you're out of school and just have a job. Because when you have a job, a lot of the time, you don't do th stuff pertaining to your job outside of work. I mean, you might, like, if you have to, like, do something at home pertaining to your job. But... Uh, you know, with homework and things, and studying for finals, studying for midterms, studying for exams, you've got lots of time that you can't be making YouTube videos. Also, I can see also the point that um, if you're older, like older enough to have a family, then that that would be you know one conflicting thing. Building a channel like that would be definitely a challenge. But you know, people have done it before, so whatever. Um, I have no idea where I am going. I am lost. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I'm just trying to go in random directions and hoping I'm in the right direction. And the problem is, is that I just forgot to heal and now I gotta fight this thing and this thing might kill me. Nope, it has 14 damage. Okay, that's good. Um, let's bust out my attack gear right here. What bing, what bang, what ching, what chang, and I don't know why I made those sound effects, but well, it's all good in the neighborhood. And let's, oh god, this is not good. Well, you know what, I, I feel like I talk so much in this video, but then I realize I talk so much in every single video I make, so I, I don't really feel that like guilty about it. I don't know, I, apparently some people like when I ramble on, and I understand that actually, like when... You know, if you like my videos because I talk so much, I understand where you're coming from, honestly. Because I, I have a couple of commentators that play video games that I don't even play anymore. But just listening to them talk is actually entertaining. Or oh, it's just like, man, that voice, you know. I don't even care that you're playing Hello Kitty Island Adventure. I'm watching your video, you know. I don't know. Um, a good example of this is actually... Uh, Total Halibut or Total Biscuit, as he might you might know him as. I watch his videos all the time. I can just minimize his videos and play games in the background while just listening to him review a game. Like I don't even need to look at the game. I just need to hear his voice because it's just entertaining to listen to him. I don't know. To me, so there's some commentators that just are awesome. Uh, my favorite commentators, one of my favorite commentators, um, Silent Core. Who plays RuneScape? I just got recently back into his videos. Because when I quit RuneScape, I unsubscribed to all my RuneScape channels. I just, you know, said, you know, let's just unsubscribe. I'm not playing the game anymore. But uh, when I was playing RuneScape, I just like, hopped on RuneScape one day. And I don't really think I'm getting back into it. It's, uh, I don't know. I'm not that interested in it anymore. It's, it's really cool theory. Like, if I, got, if I could get back into it, it would be awesome. But I don't think I'm going to get back into it. Um, but anyway, his videos are awesome. And I don't even play the game, so that's a good example there. Also, I'm going to pause this video here soon, probably after this fight, just to see if I can get somewhere, because uh, it's like almost 20 minutes into this video, and we are not getting anywhere. I don't know where I'm going. I probably should have got like a map or something. 
Uh, I don't know. I, I remember this one game, actually. I almost bought on Steam a while back. It's it's a dungeon-based game. You know what? I'm pausing this. I'm going to figure out what, the, what it was called. You know what? No, I'm not actually going to pause it. I'm going to, to show you what this game is. If I can find it. You know, this is the worst idea ever because I'm not going to be able to find it. And, oh, my God. Wait. Oh, no. Um, ooh, look, some sales. You guys don't care about this. Aha, uh -huh, I found it. Better pause this trailer before it gets taken down for copyright or something. Uh, this is the game right here. Legend of Grimrock. Let's show some screenshots. Look at these things. Whoa, okay, let's get back to Adventure Quest. Exit Steam. Okay, basically what the point I was trying to make there is, uh, I was watching a video on that a while back when it was on sale for like $3. I didn't end up getting the game. But it's sort of like this dungeon crawler sort of thing, like where everything is built in squares, so you move forward in squares, so you can get lost very easily in the hardcore mode without a map, and, or maybe it was the game in general, maybe you couldn't have a map, I'm not sure, I forget, but, um, the, the trick was get grid paper, and, like, uh, get a bunch of grid paper, maybe even tape it together, and then, you know, map out the rooms, you know, if, if this room was dangerous, put an X over it, or a skull or something, and it was a pretty interesting concept, you know, that was pretty cool. I actually thought it was pretty interesting, but, uh, you know, I, I wasn't a big fan of the... I saw some gameplay. I wasn't a big fan of it, but uh, it looked interesting. It looked like a different concept. I mean, you don't even have to do that. I mean, you could play the game without it and make the game a lot more difficult, but uh, I guess, you know, writing it down on paper would tell you what's in each room and whatnot. And that would have been a good idea with this, so... You know, I'm going to pause the video, I'm going to try to do some of this, and I'll be back when I actually find something useful. You will die, and I will retrieve all of my mana because this combination of armor and staff gives me so much mana, and so does this pet. And you shall not pass. Yes. Die. Okay, heal up. Can I avoid being spiked? Who knows? 72? I've got 150 dexterity, come at me, get on my level, stupid trap, oh, it's a yeti. I have this strange feeling I've just been going in circles for the past 20 minutes. Well, there you go, I got hit by a trap, and the trap automatically kills you, automatically, no warning, just kills you, and I have 618, you know what, I give up, no, no. No.